Air seconded by. So you're gonna have to be John or Rod. Seconded by Rod. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary. Uh, any conflicts of interest? If not, we can declare them at the time. Do we have any additions or deletions to the agenda? Just go ahead, uh, CAO. It's not really an addition, but if, if you don't mind, I'd like to take a moment just to introduce uh, Jared. Jared, I'm going to butcher the last name. Uh, What's that? DL. DL? Yep. Okay, Jared DL. Jared's with uh, WSP, and he's uh, contracted to provide planning services uh, to the town of Yarmouth on a, on a term basis. And so uh, Morris Lloyd had been with us all in all, I guess close to a dozen years on and off. Uh, he recently retired, and Jared is, has stepped in. His company stepped in to help us out. So I just want to make that introduction before we get going. Good. Thank you. Um, can I have a motion to accept the agenda as presented, please? Moved by John, seconded by Rod. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Um, this is a public participation meeting. Uh, for an application to amend the municipal planning strategy, the MPS, and land use bylaw LUB to permit cultivating and processing in the general commercial C2 zone, including value added productions for the wholesale and retail market use with the limitations outlined in the planner's report. And Jared, you have a few comments before we go? Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Through, yeah, we'll go through a quick presentation. So it's for 26 Burton Avenue. Um, it's located off of Stars Road. Um, the property in question is just behind the car quest, looking from Stars. Um, there's nearby, there's the Superstore, the Walmart, and the Mariner Center. Uh, the property is zoned General Commercial, or C2 zone. And really this zone's intent is to permit a broad range of commercial uses. So there's a light industrial that's permitted in there as well. Um, and really a lot of these sites are quite far from residential areas. The intent is that there'd be a broad range of commercial opportunities that could happen there. Oh, I'm trying to lean in. You guys hear me better now? Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. So the, the property is owned general commercial or C2. So really the intent of that zone is that it would permit a broad range of commercial uses. So light industrial as well as a number of commercial opportunities. And it's quite a bit f further away for the most part from a lot of the main residential areas. So the intent with that is to have a fair bit of flexibility of what could take place there. Um, and just to look at the star on that zoning map, that's where it is. So all the red sites are uh, general commercial. There's some uh, commercial holding in pink nearby, as well as some institutional. So there's an existing low-rise commercial building on a site. And it's proposed to be renovated into a cannabis production and processing facility. As I mentioned, it's currently zone C2, uh, and there are currently light industrial uses permitted in that zone. However, when this bylaw and this plan was created, um, cannabis as a use was not legal um, when it was passed. So really we're looking as part of this application to actually add the use into the, the land use bylaw or the zoning, so to speak, as well as the municipal plan. Um, and then to add that in as a permitted use within the C2 zone. Um, so that would amend both the municipal planning strategy and the land use bylaw. And it would permit cannabis production processing facilities. And it would also allow similar cultivating and processing facilities on all properties zone C2 uh, if they can meet the siting requirements, which I'll step through with just a quick moment. So what we're proposing to add in with these um, siting requirements is that the operations would be required to minimize and prevent any negative impact on surrounding properties by sound, odor, dust, fumes, or smoke. And that's similar to what you'll see with a lot of kind of industrial zoning uh, clauses. It's just kind of like a catch-all to catch some of the more nuisance activities that might take place with an industrial operation. And also that the operations are not obnoxious by reason of any other emissions, a refuse, or water, carried waste. And a lot of that time that's to deal with like um, outdoor storage, or if there's garbage on site to have those like screened under bins and things like that. Um, the other requirements are that the property does not front on Stars Road. It's really the intent for those commercial properties along Stars Road is to be a lot of retail. Um, and it's that the property is not located more than 100 meters from a residential zone. So how the zoning bylaw is proposed to define cultivating and processing 
uh, it goes a bit beyond what you'd get from the federal requirements with cannabis production facilities. So it also permit things like um, central oil manufacturing and things like that. So a lot of any use where you kind of grow a number of, let's say, plants on site, you could refine them down to a number of different type of products uh, that would be permitted through this proposed use. And the, the actual text that's proposed to be added into the land use bylaw um, would be this clause up above would be coming in there what's called 19.1. So it's the kind of the list of permitted C2 zone uses. And that cultivating and processing include value added production for wholesale and retail market, uh, provided operations are conducted and contained within a wholly enclosed building and are not obnoxious by any reason of sound, fumes, dust, smoke, or other emissions, refuse matters, or water carried waste. The property does not front on Stars Road and is located more than 100 meters from a residential zone. And the, the policy that's in the NPS is quite similar to that, and that's just really the intent statement uh, for what would take place in the zoning. Uh, and just for reference, there's a um, cannabis production processing facilities can be a number of different sizes. Uh, what a lot of places are doing now uh, is they're doing this example below where they're taking shipping containers that have been retrofitted, uh, kind of like a mini greenhouse, and they're actually placing them within a building. And they'd have a double layer of um, like filtering to them in most cases. Uh, so it kind of, you hit it twice as it's before it would go outside of the building. Um, although that's not the only case, some others are doing kind of full greenhouse type facilities. The advantage of kind of separating it out is if there was a, like an issue with insects or something that would contaminate the crops, uh, they're cordoned off a bit more, so you'd have less issues with it destroying the whole crop. Um, so if this amendment is approved as proposed, um, the C2 zone would permit the growing of cannabis, processing cannabis for wholesale, um, for wholesale, I should say, as a licensed producer or selling cannabis for medical purposes. Uh, so people that are authorized through Health Canada. It doesn't permit kind of commercial consumption or sale, so recreational cannabis, like the typical things you'd see kind of sold at NSLC. Uh, that's, of course, still done through NSLC. Um, and there's a number of federal act requirements under the Cannabis Act, uh, just for reference so you're all aware. Uh, any building used for cannabis production and processing is required of the systems to filter air to prevent the escape of odors associated with cannabis to the outdoors. And licenses under the Cannabis Act are valid for a maximum of two years and are not automatically renewed. Um, really the incentive there is to encourage compliance with all of these regulations so you wouldn't be issued a, a renewal in your permit uh, if you fail to comply with legal requirements. It's kind of some of the intent behind some of this. So really in terms of process uh, here today, uh, we're still open to hearing for public feedback and this is why we have the meeting. Um, and we will schedule a public hearing uh, likely on April 9th. And there'll be a mail that goes out regarding that and a number of ads that go just to notify the public. Uh, so really we'll have those sessions and then the public hearing is really the, the big discussion on any changes that might take place to the proposal between now and of it being legal if it does take place and is approved. Um, just in terms of some of the operations, um, they're highly regulated by the, the provincial and federal regulations. Uh, therefore, municipal controls tend to be a bit more targeted, uh, mostly with regards to um, the impact on adjacent land uses, so adjacent properties. And there is, it is a growing industry and there's a potential for job creation uh, and this introduces opportunities as well for other small businesses in the C2 zone uh, focused on plant extracts. So, there you go. Good. Thank you, Jared. My pleasure. Um, since this is a public participation meeting, do we have any, anybody from the audience come in and like to make a presentation? Have a question, comment, or concern? Just come on up, Mr. Andrews, state your name and... <coughs> That's the post, sir. Yeah.
How's that? Good. In learning about uh, the proposed uh, project or the rezoning of lands that adjoining or just across the street some properties that I own. Uh, I, and I'm not very good at it by the way, I, I took the liberty to go online to see what's happening across the country uh, with, with these uh, firms, so-called, as they're referred to. And as I learned, and I got very alarmed about it, uh, that, you know, provinces like Quebec and Ontario and British Columbia, California, all having the same problem, uh, which you people I'm sure are all aware of, but I, you know, one, the Financial Post in January of last year in Pelham, Ontario, uh, did an article on the skunk smell of these cannabis operations. Uh, the CBC did another one, actually they did a couple last year, uh, one in Gatineau, Quebec, and of which that led to another one uh, that was, well in fact the article reads, someone has to step up and uh, Rick Coleman, an MLA in Langley, BC, said there's four cannabis facilities causing a big stink in their area uh, and and his, his article goes on to say, very bad. I have one family where the wife leaves the home for up to four times a week to stay with relatives because of migraines and it's, there's health issues as the province of Ontario uh, has done, uh, have a public health thing that's online, which it's easy to read and I'm not gonna read it all tonight. Uh, I just like to bring it to your attention that these farms are having problems uh, with the skunk smell from their product. And I don't think Star Road is a place that we need any more skunks than we have. Uh, the, you know, California has the same problem. There's one guy lives, Mr. Wanderski, his name is, he lives a half a mile away in a residential zone and he has to wear a respirator sometimes when the wind is in the right place, just to go out in his backyard. We had, these zones were created years ago, before some of your guys' time, uh, to, to control the development in, in our C1 area, and our C2 area, and our C3, and our R1, and and this is not a permitted use in the C2 zone as it sits today. And I would think that maybe you may want to ask the question as to whether you would permit it or consider it in an R1 zone. Uh, I think the answer to that probably is no. Politically and otherwise, it would probably be a disaster. Uh, however, this location happens to be uh, for better words, or lack of words, I should say, in an R1 zone, because people right across the street from it, there's the Journey's End has 125 rooms, uh, and its its occupancy rate is very high. That's a lot of people sleeping. Okay, there's restaurants right across the street from it, where people eat, and I'm sure that they would probably not want to frequent these restaurants smelling skunk. Uh, I think that would be a big issue. However, I also think that permitting this or changing that zone would cause a severe financial loss to many businesses. Real estate, I think, would suffer dramatically. And as you people locally know, uh, if you remember, the word stink plant, what do you think of? Go ahead, say it. Sanford. And real estate in Sanford has suffered for many years financially because of the stink plant, you know, where they process and make fertilizers. So. so in saying all that, I think that, that it would be a grave mistake to change that zone. 
uh, for permitted use that we have all kinds of lands available in industrial parks and industrial lands to, to operate this uh, kind of an event instead of putting it in our C2 zone on Stars Road, which is the main street, you may as well say, in this town. And the Stumble Skunk might not be what you want to see in the headlines. It certainly wouldn't be what I'd want to see, especially when it comes time to pay taxes. The, uh, anyway, I thank you for your time. Thank you. And Anybody else? Mr. Boudreaux, how you doing, Byron? Chair, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Uh, my name is Byron Boudreaux. I, uh, I'm here concerning, uh, I own property there and I don't want to see property value drop. Uh, I know a year ago or so, it's one of the worst places in, that you can invest money, Yarmouth and Cape Breton. And it was in the paper, it was on the news. Uh, I sold a piece of property here a few years ago and uh, you can smell the fiberglass in the summertime because it's not filtered. Uh, marijuana is no different. You've got the highest tax rate is Stars Road. You're going to jeopardize your highest tax rate to grow marijuana. That's what my concern is more than anything. I'm not against anybody growing marijuana. They can grow it all they want and make all the money they want to make. But when it comes to filtering and smelling marijuana, you've got the Wesleyan Church on one side, you've got the school, and I'll tell you, that stuff lingers. So in the summertime, I had, and the only reason I found out that it was bad was because some, one of my tenants called me and said, look, we had an awful smell down there, right? And it was a fiberglass smell is what it was in the summertime. So if fiberglass can smell like that, so can marijuana and anything else that has an odor. Um, a filter system would enhance, you know, the, the problem without a doubt. If they can get a filter system that can provide a, an adequate, um, to get rid of the odor, I should say, there's a way to do it, I'm sure. But all I'm concerned about is to see property in the town of Yarmouth enhanced, not go down. And then around here lately, it seems like, you know, we want a senior's town here. And we want, we're pushing for seniors town, but yet we want to seem to do things in a different way. And I know this is just a PAC, and it's just bringing up concerns. That's all I'm doing. But uh, I'd really like you to think about what you're doing and, uh, before you bring it to council. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you, Byron. Anybody else? Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dan Harvey. I'm here representing the uh, project proponent, uh, Glenn Dunn. And um, I, I guess, uh, first off, uh, I truly respect the citizens who have taken the time to uh, show up tonight and, and to express the, their concerns. And uh, uh, I'm very glad that you've given me the, the opportunity to, to address some of those concerns as well. Um, just a couple of specifics. Um, <clears throat> in, uh, I, I should give some background. My, my role in this project has been to investigate the um, regulatory requirements as it pertains to potential re renovation of an existing facility. And um, before I came here, I took time to print off the section of the government website pertaining to the cultivation of, of uh, legal cannabis, and it's 37 pages long. It, it addresses everything from pest control to staff to uh, sanitation, lavatories, like you name it, and it's covered in that document, including, which what the main concern I've heard tonight is, is uh, smell. Um, the, uh, earlier gentleman's name, I, I apologize, I missed, uh, spoke about California and, and other jurisdictions. Uh, it's my understanding that the regulations in Canada are more stringent than those in the U.S. because the U.S. actually rolled out their uh, cannabis programs earlier, starting in Colorado, and basically the Canadian government has learned from that 
and enhance the strictness of the regulations to, uh, to address some of those early learnings from our neighbors in the U.S. Um, in terms of comparing it to a, a fiberglass type facility, it's apples and oranges. The uh, uh, fiberglass ma manufacturing doesn't have the same re regulatory regimen that a cannabis production facility does. Um, the big thing that I'd like to stress to all concerned, as, as we stated earlier, is that um, this is an economic development opportunity for, for the town to a degree that I'm not sure if you've had many proposed investments of this magnitude, but um, I think it's going to be a really good thing if we can get it off the ground. The, the amount of investment that, that Glenn is, is proposing to do here is, is in the magnitude of, of the millions. Uh, by the time you renovate an existing facility to government standards, um, do all of the licensing, um, hire the staff, uh, the, whole, the whole shoot and match, um, it is a large um, risk, risky investment at this point in time. He's willing to do so because, for a number of reasons, he's been uh, um, doing business in here since the 80s. He likes doing business in Yarmouth. Um, and he feels that, that he had, quite honestly, a bit of loyalty, and he feels he has something to add to the community here in terms of economic development. So um, in my opinion, uh, I'm working for him, but hats off to him for, for, for doing that. Um, I guess the, uh, <clears throat> in terms of the statement made concerning how property values would plummet, I, I've seen no evidence of that in other jurisdictions. I live in, uh, up in the valley in Berwick. Um, I don't think anybody has complaints and problems in can cannabis that opened up just off the 101 there. And uh, um, last time I checked, that, that industrial park was, was very full, you know. In terms of the neighbors uh, uh, being affected by uh, noxious odors and things like that, uh, I think that the, that the limitations that, that you have proposed here, specifically not being fronted on Stars Road, and the uh, um, limitation of separation from, from R1 zones uh, are, are appropriate. Um, I know uh, certainly surrounding the, pro uh, the back end of that property now is like a buffer of trees. And uh, quite honestly, um, in terms of uh, the types of businesses that might um, be, be negative to, to neighbors, I think this one is but as innocuous as you can get. You're talking about a facility that, that is totally enclosed, well ventilated, high, highly secured, and uh, and hiring up you know 15 to 25 jobs uh, once it gets going. So uh, th those are, are the pros. And uh, to sum up, I, I think that the existing rent regulations should um, address any of the concerns that that neighbors would have. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Dan. Pardon me. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Any other questions or comments or concerns? Uh, John. I drove by the one at Colebrook, I believe it is, Robinson. Okay. I couldn't smell anything. And the last time I noticed, I took note of it because I, I knew this was coming up. Um, <clears throat> so with the other organizations in place that are already existing in producing, manufacturing, processing, and so on, are you aware, other than what was brought up, let's just say in the Maritimes, of any issues with regards to the smell? So the other thing that I was thinking is, as I was thinking about that and also thinking about the opportunity here, I don't think anyone in this room would be opposed to any business. That's not the issue. Um, but I'm thinking I'm going by at probably 110, or sorry, the speed limit, 
Um, <laughs> yeah. But on Stars Road, I'm going to be 30 kilometers or 50 kilometers to stop, perhaps, depending on traffic. So I'm going to have a chance for, if there were any odors, for that to linger more, for me to pick it up, or if, if I was at one of the restaurants or the car wash or gassing up or going in and out of any of the shopping areas. So that is an issue that if these regulations haven't been upgraded, um, you know, for, for a couple of years, um, on any type of production, if, even if we leave the word cannabis out of it for now, because it's only been around for a short time, legally, um, if the regulations haven't been upgraded, then I guess there's pretty much a guarantee we're going to have some sort of a, an order from that. And on the side of the highway, at highway speeds versus down, uh, in the main area at town speeds and or pedestrian speed, it could be a night and day difference is all I'm wondering about. Your Worship. thanks to those that came in to speak there's nothing does my heart better than to see people come in because we we can't make the best decisions unless everything's on the table so I was I was um, jotting down notes as each person came forward um, my first question was do they have the same regulations that we are putting forth um, mr. Harvey you you said they're not that's I think that's an easy check I think under the next steps check. back here um, is that staff is going to continue to review the proposal um, and any feedback by by the people that are coming to the uh, coming forward with questions? So that's going to be one of the questions I'll I'll want answered. Um, and as well, I will probably um, I'll probably send a, a note out to my colleagues across the country that have these type of facilities. That's an email away so that they can tell me where they located. In comparison to what we're trying to do and what are the issues and so so that's an easy one but staff will look into that uh, um, to to Byron's question do property values drop that's a big one stars roads a big deal stars road is um, stars road is a big deal because Roy's out there yes Yeah, yeah, maybe we should have come up to the mic there, Roy. Roy, yeah. I don't know if Roy does that. Huh? I shouldn't have said he's okay to talk. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> because years ago, uh, when these events took place, all the businesses, if it was in a, a business uh, environment, got notices uh, in the wisdom of our politicians, they took out the occupancy tax, so therefore now all of the business owners know nothing about this. On Saturday I talked to the manager of Sobeys, hadn't heard anything about it. I got an email this morning from, from the Journey's End. She'd been out of town and just got back and read, I had dropped my card off. And because when these letters go out, now they just go to the landlords. They don't go to businesses. So therefore, the people that really pay the bills are the ones that's in business. And so they don't know and didn't know uh, anything about this public meeting. And I know the answer to that is, oh, it's on our website. And that's true. But you know what? These people don't go on the websites checking. These letters go for the Yarmouth Mall, goes to Montreal, to Toulon, and maybe it doesn't even get opened. But Linda DeVu, the mall manager, told me she didn't know anything about this uh, whatsoever. Uh, the manager of Sobeys didn't know. The manager of the Superstore didn't know. 
and neither did the manager of Journey's End, which are the most closely directed to. But, and I heard the gentleman's comments about the rules and the regulations. Well, all these other people have rules and regulations as well. And once the smell gets out, you're not going to change it no matter what the rules are. You know, that once you stink, you stink. And that's probably the end of that equation. So in, in making those considerations, okay, we, you know, I didn't hear anything about other locations that are already in the what, And I know Stars Road and I know the reasons why it's wanted in that particular building. But I don't think that should be part of the consideration. The consideration is we have places for industrial uses. They've all got that all wood products been out there vacant for how long? 15 years? I, I would assume, something like that. There's all kinds of space in, in reading and welcoming the comments on amalgamation last week. Uh, the Hebrew Industrial Park's got all kinds of space out there. All kinds of it. And there's still space up in the Armand Industrial Park. So, other than the quote, and the lack of better words, but the selfish wanting to change the zoning for this particular building that can affect a lot of people, then why wouldn't they, if, if it's easy to put together, it'd be a lot easier to put together in an industrial zone than in the C2 zone. And, and I think that's, I won't say any more. Thank you. <laughs> right? Um, okay, so I did say it's the property values, and I don't know how. Go ahead. How it, yeah, go ahead, Pam, and then Byron will say comment afterwards. Is Byron coming? No. Sorry, no, I'm just going through my questions. So the property values one um, is something, I don't know how you check that, but I mean, I assume it's just cross checking with um, other jurisdictions, right? That's. I would, Sanford. Um, and then I just said, it, it is a huge opportunity. There's no question about it. it it's a big deal, it's, it's a big opportunity, but it has to be done right. So, so that's, that's what I had jotted down. And then after, when Roy came up again, um, Jeff, maybe you can answer this one, or, or one of you, that the notice is going out to Toulon versus you know what I mean? Like, how do you fix that? It, it doesn't ha I don't think it happens in a residential like that. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, so Roy's correct. Uh, a few years ago, gosh, maybe close to 10 years ago, when they phased out the business occupancy tax, uh, they took away our, our database of, of addresses of businesses that occupied properties owned by larger, you know, landholding companies. Mm -hmm. And so we have, we, we rely on PVSC for our addressing. They are only concerned about property owners now. They're no longer concerned with occupants. And so we've lost that. And we don't have the ability to track that and to provide notices to, to occupants. So it is, it is unfortunate, but it is, it's true for, for all municipalities in Nova Scotia now. So, so here's my second question. Is that fixable? <clears throat> it's not easily fixable. Uh, it was it was easier and uh, more more of an issue when there was a tax associated with it. Right? There were there was an organization required to keep an up to date database of of taxable accounts, and so there was there was real importance to it uh, in, in an ongoing basis. In this situation, uh, you know, we might have a couple of uh, planning strategy amendments a year, and you know, the notice range is something like 100 meters. So you'd have an ongoing effort to track businesses opening and closing, and addresses for once or twice a year. So we could probably do a better job of notifying in that area when we know something's going on than we currently do. That would be a lot less effort. 
than trying to maintain an entire database of yeah. businesses opening and closing. Because you're, you're talking about 100 meters yeah. Yeah. a few times a year, yeah. right? I'll, I'm sitting here thinking, I don't want to put Roy on the spot, but Roy's down south on vacation, and I'm the tenant in his building, and this happens, and I don't even know. That's what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Because they didn't know. Okay. Um, all right. So those are my. Thank yep. you. Good. Those are my questions. Go ahead, Byron. Come on up. This, this here off Stairs Road is just almost, not eye level, but it's, it's, it's down in the gully. So the smell's gonna, gonna linger more around that area. That's all I'm saying. If the building's up high, yeah, you, most likely you're not gonna smell it anyway. But if it's where it is, it does make a difference. And the smell, like I said, there's a lot of businesses there. And uh, property value to me, it means everything. Uh, I own a lot of property, and you guys want your tax dollars, Thanks, Byron. Martha, you got the one up. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, this is a small town. Notifying the businesses in the area, and I'm saying area, 100 meters is not that that's that's like from here to the street practically. That that's not reasonable. Um, but it's a small town. It can't be too hard to get together some letters and drop them off. Sure. Uh, so I'm sorry, but I can't find the right word that's polite for, for that excuse. And also, I hadn't thought of all wood, and I wonder. There are obviously other places that might be possible. I originally came here in favor of, yeah, go ahead, go for it. Um, and I really appreciate the comments I've heard because they've given me a more balanced um, look at the situation. Thank you. Good, thank you. Your Worship. Martha's having a problem with her with her word, <laughs> with her word. But I'm gonna use nice your nice word. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna say this on on both sides. I agree. Um, the the old system messed with us enough that we just didn't get it exactly right this time. And that's why I asked the question: How do we do it better? How do we do it better for the next time? And 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 this is this is this side of me. The other side of me. Um, is saying um, radio ads, newspaper, social media, everything, and, and you're right, everybody doesn't look at that stuff, but I'm going to use a word I shouldn't use, but we're not babysitters either, right? So it's, so it's, a, it's hard because it, 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 it's... <laughs> no, we'll get the letters out. Oh, we'll get the letters out, but people... <laughs> Yes, but people, people also have to be aware. Of, there, there just has to be a general awareness. Be, it, you're here all the time. Yeah. Right. It, that, that's all right. People need to be more nosy when it comes to their community. Jeff. Yeah, so nobody's, nobody's arguing that it's, that it's difficult or unreasonable to deliver, hand deliver letters within a reasonable range. But what we do when we when we when we establish the rules for how we engage or how we notify they are rules we establish a policy so that in the case of mr dunn's application or somebody else's application we're not taking extraordinary efforts uh we're, we're applying the the rules fairly and consistently uh from one application to another and so it's it's a great point uh roy we don't have that database we used to have and that's left an information gap and so with Martha's volunteering to deliver letters, I think we'll be okay uh, going forward if uh, if the committee wishes to uh, to make that adjustment. Good, thank you. Dan, go ahead. Uh, just uh, since 
we're all making lists of things we, we need to do. That, <coughs> I made a, uh, a note as well. Somewhere embedded in that 37 pages of cultivation regulations, I'm sure there are specifications for what the ventilation system must look like uh, as a minimum. And uh, my pledge would be to research that and send it to whoever you think is, is appropriate. Um, you know, I'm sure it has things like the number of microns, size of the micron filter that's required and the frequency of cleaning the filters and, and the, the capacity based on the square footage of the thing. It's, 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 I know it's in there somewhere. So uh, I'll dig that up, is what I'm trying to say. Good. Okay. We'll give that to you, Jared? Yeah, he's yeah. correct. It is in there, too. Okay, good. Uh, John. So I understand the next movement here is to make a recommendation to Council for Public Participation. Would that, would this be the time to ask staff to gather the inquiries from other municipalities with regards to after the operation has been in place to help answer some of the questions that have been raised tonight along with yeah, the... It's on the, uh, we're going to adjourn this meeting from the public participation portion of it, John, then we're going to go into a planning advisory and then from there we'll make recommendation to council. So we'll have that discussion and anything you want to encapsulate or incorporate, we'll give that to uh, Jared and he will pass that on to council Perfect. If, it, if it passes. Thank you. Uh, Your Worship. Yeah, just, just to be clear with Mr. Harvey, um, with regard to the regulations, from my perspective, um, I think the regulations are easy to find and the comparison between, you know, what Roy is mentioning, um, respectfully, in the U.S., they are different in Canada, far different. But my question is, are the regulations enough? Are, are they, are, am I going to call my colleagues and find out that, you know what, it works or, or not? I think that was the, that was the point, right? Because we can, we, we can set the regulations as high as we want, it still might not work. And I'm not, don't buy any, I'm not against this by any means. I don't want you to think that. Yeah, I spent the first 18 years of my career taking this stuff off the streets. So I'm glad to <laughs> get it into the taxes the right way. Good. Thank you. Everybody good? Like to adjourn, have motion to adjourn. Moved by Pam, seconded by John. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Uh, motion, uh, call this meeting to order. Can we have approval of the minutes of December the 3rd, 2019, please? Moved by John, seconded by, it's gonna have to be you, Rod. Seconded by Rod. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, uh, business. Um, Application to amend the Municipal Planning Strategy, MPS, and Land Use Bylaw, LUB, to permit cultivating and processing in the general commercial C2 zone, including value-added productions for the wholesale and retail market use, with limitations outlined in the planner's report. And John, maybe Jeff can talk about the, the process from here with this, Jeff. Well, you've had uh, your, your public participation meeting this evening, so uh, you can do a couple of things. You can, re you can refer it back to staff for further uh, research uh, with specific questions would be best. Uh, and then we can bring that forward at a future meeting for, for your consideration. Uh, if you're satisfied tonight that you have enough information, you can uh, refer the matter to council to consider and if deemed advisable. Uh, to adopt the changes, in which case they would proceed with first reading uh, at the next council meeting. Would it be April the 9th, maybe? No. April the... <clears throat> okay. Public hearing would be as far away as April, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it would come up in March, would be the oh, council yeah, March, meeting. Yeah, okay. April would I be the next yeah, council meeting for public yeah, hearing. Okay. <laughs> okay um, so the, the short answer, Your Worship, is if there are if there's work to be done uh, to inform the committee uh, prior to making a recommendation to council, this is the, the level at which we do the work. All okay. right, so you refer any questions to, to staff and Jared will take those on and, uh, 
and bring back answers. Uh, I, yeah, I'm of the feeling that I think there's still a little work to be done. Even if I, if I got one of the regulations, and here's a regulation that's, as Dan said, that's 37 pages, and they're going to show me the filtration or the filtering system or the air purification system. I don't know if a million cubic whatever is as good as, like, I don't know that thing, but I think the thing we have to do is what you talked about, your worship, is talking to some of the other municipal, municipal units uh, here in Atlantic Canada. And um, Dan, do you know if there's any other processing facilities like this that are in a town or a, uh, in like in another town? Okay. 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 Uh, Rod, get any questions, concerns, comments? I'm looking at the uh, process that is laid out here now. Public information meeting, which is tonight. Staff review continues. Send the mail out notice and then a public hearing. In between the staff review and sending out the mail out, could we do another meeting like this after we've gathered the information that uh, we need? That would give us, I think, a better idea of where we're going to go with this. Then if we decide to carry on, it still has to go to a public hearing, correct, yeah. before it goes to council. So that would give one more opportunity for people to come forward and, and make uh, suggestions or, or recommendations it, to us to do that. I, I don't feel we have enough information on hand. I think they made a good point about, about it being in town. That wasn't something that, that I had thought about, frankly, before. The fact that that building is located in town instead of being on the outskirts or in an, an industrial park. Yes. Uh, my concern would be the same as the ones that were presented tonight. Smell, property values, the two things. On the other side, jobs and another business for our town, more, more, more taxes. Yeah. So my suggestion would be that we, uh, we insert one more public information and, meeting. And Roy touched on it too. Uh, and you've talked about this year, Worship. He touched on it too, about the, we don't use the word amalgamation anymore, Roy. We use modernization and consolidation now for joining municipal groups. And I don't think if we were one unit, if that went in Hebron Industrial Park or somebody wanted to put one in there, I don't think we'd be having this discussion at all, right? And, and to kind of hit on what uh, Roy said and what Martha volunteered she said she would do is maybe we could um, contact or inform the people that actually occupy the businesses in that area too. Could that be done, Jared? Yeah. Jeff, yeah, I think that could be done. For sure. Okay. Uh, so what's the next step if we want to send this back to staff? Uh, motion to send back to staff to incorporate some of the concerns from the from the audience tonight and some of the uh, concerns that they had. Around odors, property values. Yep. Other municipal feedback. In Atlantic, yeah. Is there anything else you can think of? I think that is a no. Good. Uh, so we can have that motion. Your worship, moved by your worship, seconded by Mr. Rose. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary. Um, how do what, what's the timeline look on that for for Dan and Glenn? Good, next month, good. Barry, you don't want to stay here for the political sign one? <laughs> Roy? Mike? Mike? You know, Mike is going to... Mike's there. Mike's staying for the, the political... Mike's here, Mike's here. Oh, okay. Um, talking about 
about the, the microns and so on for filtering out particulate matter, but sometimes odor doesn't have a size that can be adequately picked up by yeah, various microns. Yeah. So I'll, I'll get some context. So my, I don't have the, the Cannabis Act regulations memorized, but uh, if memory serves, essentially they it gives a very broad sweeping approach that you need to have a filtration system in effect that's properly maintained and updated uh, to, I think it says eliminate any negative odors, but that is, obviously it changes over time and it's not gonna be perfect all the time. Most of the issues I've heard about come from extremely large scale production facilities so we're talking like 400,000 square feet. Uh, a lot of the examples in the states come from those. Um, this property I think is around 55,000 square feet. Um, I'm not expecting it to be at that scale. Um, that would trigger a lot of these kind of very large area of odor issues, um, concerns. Uh, the one example I do know of um, that has like production facilities in a business park, most of the ones I'm aware of are within business parks. Um, but there's no odor issues associated with it. It's in East Hans in their uh, Elmsdale Business Park. So there's a couple there's around. There in yeah. Another couple of weeks or something. So, Dan, you've got the list of concerns, so you could yeah. take that back and work on those yourself. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we good? Thank, thank you. Uh, application to amend the land use bylaw LUB to ban the display of all campaign lawn signs during elections. You're going to take that one, CAO. Thank you. So this uh, this arose from a uh, resolution at town council um, recently, and uh, perhaps the chairman might want to comment on it since he was the the original sponsor of the resolution. But the, the intent was to, as the, uh, as the introduction indicated, to uh, eliminate all um, lawn signs during, during municipal elections. Uh, sorry, all elections. Um, it came up, I guess, because it's a municipal election year. And uh, in, in elections past, there have been an awful lot of signs. And with our growing, I guess, awareness and concern about plastics and, uh, and the environment, uh, that was sort of the genesis of the uh, of the of the idea. So uh, the amendments to the land use bylaw that would um, that would be necessary in order to impose the ban are attached for your consideration. And at this, this point, I'll stop talking and allow uh, perhaps the chairman, if he'd like to address it. Yep. Thank you. Uh, this actually came about. Uh, I was looking at what our engineer is doing out on Port Maitland Beach with, uh, with signs. So this would only have to do with political signs. Uh, last municipal election, there's 400 and how many, how many councillors do we have? Your Worship, 400 and something councillors? Yeah, 400 and something councillors. Say we have 400 councillors and I think we had 2,200 people run for school board and uh, municipal council across the province. So if each one of those put out 30 signs, and, and there's a lot more in Halifax, average 30 signs, times uh, two, that's over 60,000 signs. 43% uh, of the people uh, don't get elected, and there's a turnover, like I said, of 43%. Uh, we have a constant problem here in the town of Yarmouth with uh, wind taking away the signs, we have a constant problem with people calling up town hall to say a political party or a certain candidate put a sign on either provincial, federal, or municipal property. Uh, the other thing we have is people putting up signs in right of ways and blocking views. Uh, the other thing is, uh, if you want to think about it, um, people can get scared of running for municipal council um, being cost prohibitive. So if you know that it's gonna cost you two or three or $4,000 to mount a credible campaign, put up that amount of signs. Uh, some people don't have the wherewithal or the financial means to do that. So it does level the playing field. And you have to get back to the old way of doing politics is going door to door. Uh, Steve Barry, this last election, and I said it at the meeting that we, this was brought up. 
he probably ran the most effective campaign I've seen in Yarmouth County in the last 30 years when it came to social media. Um, he had a few signs, very few signs, but I think this is a really good idea. I, and the, the other reason, not only Mark and some of the signs that he picked up at Port Maitland Beach, but I was at the um, Waste Park. There were some political signs from a, from a provincial election that were being that were busted up and being blown around from almost three years ago. And when I stored, <laughs> your worship, my old mayor signs in uh, next to my cottage, uh, I put to probably close to four or five hundred signs there. Uh, just this spring and fall, uh, some of those signs, even though I thought I took them all out to the the waste park and got rid of them. Uh, they brittled up and there were, there were some that were down, blown down in, into the river by the river area. So um, it's a concern. Plastics are our number one concern in the ocean and I just think it's the, the good thing to do and I think it's great for the environment and it helps level the playing field for people that want to participate in our electoral process. So if anybody else has a comment or a question, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Your Worship. You shouldn't get elected because of how many signs you had. It's, to me, it's as simple as that. I, I agree with everything you've just said. Um, it's 2020, we're concerned for the environment, and yet we're putting up plastic signs all over the place for a couple of weeks um, that respectfully, and I very respect, respectfully say this, I've never met a sign yet that speaks to the caliber <laughs> of a... Of a of a person that's running. And, and I, I had 200 signs up both times. I had a, I had a ton of signs up, but um, it, it doesn't mean I'm the right person for the job. I, I agree with you. It's, it's a matter of knocking on doors and talking to people and um, paying attention to, to who wants to be at the table, really. That's, that's where I go with it, but, but everything else yeah. that you said true. So keep engaged, get engaged in the process. Exactly, get people engaged in the process. And, you know, never mind that the more signs I printed, the more I got removed and... Yeah, yeah between what was blown away and what was stolen, right? And, and there are probably a lot more stolen than they were blown away, right? And, what, and where do they end up? They ended up out in the woods, out in the Markland, out in the, out, they throw them out in the ocean, I know. I know you lost probably 50 to 100 signs that were thrown in the ocean last election, right? I'm not sure if it's a lost sign. I care if they went. Yeah, where they went. Okay. Uh, the, Jeff, do you see any problem? So if somebody's running for municipal council, uh, when they come down to see the returning officer, that'll all be explained to the person if this goes through. And if somebody run, is running for uh, provincial or federal politics, it would be the same thing. You will talk to those guys, talk to the returning officer who will in turn talk to each one of the, probably the official agent for each one of the candidates running. Couldn't have said it better. Is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, so with the municipal elections, uh, candidates have to file papers here. They come and they pick up a package. They talk to the returning officer. We have a candidates meeting. Um, you know, there's plenty of opportunity to inform people uh, early that, that the, if, if the ban were in effect, that, uh, that uh, lawn signs are, are not permitted within the town. Uh, with provincial and federal elections, many fewer candidates usually, yep. and, uh, and should be much easier to, to communicate. So they'll be on the left side of Prospect Street going up, they'll be jam-packed. Again, left side. Okay. Yep. Uh, any other comments, John? This might be an ideal way to reinforce and get maximum traffic on the town website if they were to put the pictures or and or biographies of the um, running mates yep. on that yep. as a way to help draw an increase in traffic to the town's website for whether it's announcements for public participation in the future or anything like that. Yep, you're 100% right. Mike, you got that one? Got that one, good. Uh, motion to send this to council. Is that the thing, right, Jeff? So moved, moved by John, seconded by your worship. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? 
Uh, number 10, I know Councilor McLeod always likes to have discussion, but I think we're pretty well talked out tonight. When's the next meeting, Judy? Is that your March break or anything? Nope. It's week before. Week before March break? Okay. March the 10th. March the 10th, Dan. Okay. March the 10th? Yep. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Rod. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you, everybody.